there can be a better start than like a good mystery. So. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, because it's early in the morning on Valentine's Day. Some of us might be sleepy or distracted. So I thought I'd talk about some not too terribly technical things, some fun, intriguing things. This talk is going to raise um, more questions than it answers. Uh, so that's why I got this mysterious title. Um, this is joint work with Nikhil Vyas uh, in ITCS 2023. It's actually only one half of the paper, but it's the good half. So, is that, yeah, I mean, and oh, and don't be alarmed. Uh, this will be the only slide using this Broadway font. Okay, so, so <laughs> your eyes will be at ease. Good. All right. So uh, I'll start with a question that uh, many of us love: Which functions have high circuit complexity? And about the first thing you learn about circuit complexity is that nearly all functions have high circuit complexity. So most functions require huge circuits. And I think Rahul Santanam uh, mentioned this yesterday. So with high probability, a randomly chosen function doesn't have circuits of size significantly less than two to the n over n. And Lupinov showed every function has a size, circuit of size about two to the n over n. And this still does omitting like a, a one plus a little of one multiplicative factor. So it's just like a low order term. Right, right and in pictures, um, you're tossing a bunch of coins, you have some really long string. Okay, that's a random bit string. Okay, it's washed out. Okay, it's a white box, I guess. Okay. Uh, and it does not have a small circuit. So it's a simple counting argument, right? And the big question uh, that we like to think about is which natural functions exhibit this exponential behavior? Which, you know, functions which don't take too much Turing uh, resources like time or space. Uh, exhibit this kind of exponential behavior. Right? So this is a type of question we're going to be looking at. Um, so just to rephrase, we're going to ask, what is the smallest complexity class containing a function of maximum circuit complexity? Okay, just to get started. Okay, and smallest, I put in quotes because I mean, there could be some incomparable classes that each of which contain uh, a hard function. So one of the smallest known classes, I think, probably is the smallest according to some metric, is uh, two to the order in time with a sigma 2p oracle. And this was known since the uh, 1970s. Okay, I'm the first talk, so I'm going to explain, uh, you know, or recall what sigma 2p is in a moment. So there's a function in this e to the sigma 2p that requires maximum circuit complexity. Okay, recall sigma 2p is np to the np, so the predicate is, you know, there exists a polylength y for all polylength z, some verifier accepts on both of those, all right? You know, some, somewhere in the Pono hierarchy, not too high. <coughs> a canonical problem in sigma 2p is, for example, circuit minimization. I give you a Boolean circuit, and I want to know, is there a circuit smaller than the one given that computes the same function? Um, this is another, problem that we believe to be hard, uh, but we don't actually know if say sigma 2p hard. So it's like, you know, for among the other meta complexity problems, it's like one level up in the Pono hierarchy. Right. So, so that's uh, the sort of smallest known class. Let me just give a, just a high level sketch of how that works. So on an input of length n, first we're gonna compute what is the maximum circuit complexity as star of a function on n inputs, all right? So we start with two to the n, which we know is too large. We're gonna decrease it. So while for every function, it has a circuit of size at most s, okay, you can formulate this as a pi two p query. So you can ask sigma two p. So it's like for all functions, does there exist a circuit such that uh, the circuit computes the function? Okay, but remember these are to the n length queries. So evaluation on all possible inputs is, is polynomial for us. So it's a two to the order n length query to a sigma 2p org. We ask this, and while that's true, we decrement s, okay? All right, when this fails to work, there is some function that doesn't have circuits of size at most s, so then the max circuit complexity is, is one more, okay? It's like the, the last one for which you actually had a circuit of size at most s, all right? So once you've got the maximum circuit complexity, which we, I actually don't know how to compute. We know it's on the order of two to the n over n, but we don't know exactly what it is. This uh, procedure computes it. 
Then we use some search decision reduction on the sigma 2p work. We're kind of filling in bits uh, to figure out what is the lexicographically first truth table that has circuits of size uh, uh, S star and, and no less. Okay, so that's just a high level uh, idea of how you do that. I'm, I mean, just to get you started, this is not like the point of the talk, it's just to let you, you know, kind of ground you in like what is known. So, <laughs> okay, all right. It's an old, old theorem. Okay, so once I've done all that, I output the X bit of the truth table I've got because I'm trying to compute it on X, all right? All right, good. Are we awake yet? Are we? Are we? <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. All right, so, so this lower bound relativizes, and that'll be important for us. So let A be some arbitrary oracle, so arbitrary decision problem we can plug in. Okay, we have sigma 2p with an oracle A, where we just plug in the oracle into the verifier. And we say there's a function in uh, E to the sigma 2 to the A that requires maximum A oracle circuit complexity. Okay, what is an A oracle circuit? You get N or not the ands and ors have fan too, but you also get uh, an A, like gates for A. And you compute A on any number of inputs you want, well, up to whatever the maximum circuit complexity, because you're counting in terms of the wires when you uh, count with unbounded fan in gates to compute A. So, so the previous argument didn't really like think about circuits. Uh, you, could, you could just, if you had a verifier that was checking A oracle circuits, it could do a oracle circuit evaluation, everything would just go through. Okay, like many other <laughs> results in complexity theory, this one also relativizes. All right, good. Uh, we'll get to the missing string. Don't worry, it's coming. Okay, so so as a corollary, this is just some nice little corollary. Uh, if p equals np, then there's a function in e that requires maximum circuit complexity, and that's just you know. Uh, plugging in p equals np many times, okay. Uh, and this also relativizes, okay. Um, so, right, this gives us an oracle relative to which uh, e has maximum certain complexity by plugging in whatever an oracle so that p equals np. So, just as an aside, one could conclude p different np if one could show every function in e has certain complexity at most uh, when minus the maximum. Um, this is something that I learned from, I guess, Charlie Rockoff, and this was his approach to proving Peter from MP. Okay, <laughs> um, I, don't, I guess he didn't succeed. Uh, anyway, so, so he was, yeah. I don't know. He succeeded and didn't tell us. He didn't tell us, oh, he just, that, this is possible, I suppose. Okay. Definitely Charlie is. Yeah, <laughs> did, he would. Did you, yeah, Valentin, did, did you know I talk with him? Yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. he was mentioning yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is one way to possibly, if you don't believe in circuit lower bounds, then okay, try to prove P to MP. What do you mean by every function in E? What's that? What do you mean by every function in E? Well, yeah, I mean, what do I mean by that? I mean, like every, like decision problem. Language, you, you could show that the empty set has circuit complexity at most? Yes. At most, yes. Well, at most. At I'm most, sorry. yes, yes. It, it, it's, it's, it's very easy to show. Yeah, good. Well, we're awake. Good. Yes. Um, just uh, for this statement, is it enough to show for some e complete problem or just the reduction kind of lessons? You, yeah, I mean, you like there, it, you got to apply the thing to multiple things. So, yeah, I mean, I have to check out. Yeah. You made it like two to the little of that. Yeah, because uh, the e complete problem, like, like you really care about linear factors now. So, yeah. So I mean, but if you wanted, like, yeah, if you wanted to, if you could show, like, too little o of n for an e complete problem, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, we you actually care about, like, like all the factors, because, like, there's, like, h of n, there's, like, no room. Like, a one bit. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. But, uh, okay. <laughs> this is, again, not the point of the talk. This is just a warm up, get you, uh, you know, so we'll all be awake when a missing string comes. Great. Um, so, like, if we could show that e to the np, you know, which is smaller, supposedly, uh, needs exponential size circuits, for example, then by PRG constructions, uh, let's, let's say it holds almost everywhere, we would have, for example, BBP contained in 
P to the NP. Well, that's a major open problem to improve the containment of BBB and say sigma two or MA to P to the NP. Um, okay, but this is sort of you know what we're up against to try like to try to show uh, a smaller function needs uh, exponential zero complexity. But there doesn't seem to be any real barrier to improving this e to the sigma two p to sigma two e. Okay, so just the exponential time version, right? So this is uh, n time to the order n with an np oracle. You know, it could be a sat oracle. This is the exponential time analog of sigma two p. So right, it's not a deterministic class where you get to call an oracle. You just have sigma two e. Yes. So just to be picky. Yes. Um, is is sigma two e really the same as n time to the np? Because because that seems like it would um, I don't see why not. Okay, how long would the oracle? Okay, I'll think about it. Yeah, I mean, you get to ask to the order n length queries to an np oracle, but polynomial oh, to the end is to the order n. It's not to the end of the k. Yeah, so, that's so that's if that's what you're worried about, that's don't what worry. I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Polynomial to the end is to the order n. So we're we're actually all right. Okay. Yeah. We the work doesn't matter. I had to verify this for myself. Yeah. You know that's true. <laughs> good. 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 We're awake. Good. Good. Right. So the point is, one consequence of that would be, you know, we could be say sigma two p, but we already know that, so it's not. So there doesn't seem to be any real barrier to improving this, and let me. Elaborate on uh, the doesn't seem to be any real barrier part. So I'll rephrase it again. Um, does sigma two e contain a function requiring exponential size circuits? All right. All right. So so this seemingly smaller but still exponential, still difficult complexity class does it need exponential size circuits? All right. So it's been known since Kanon that it requires sub half exponential circuits. Whatever that means. It's early into the polylog n <laughs> that requires into the polylog n side circuits. All right. So it's been known for a really long time. But the interesting thing is, we don't even know if there's an oracle uh, such that sigma 2e has small circuits, like sub exponential side circuits. So we can't even design an oracle for which that is true, as far as we know. Okay. Now we know there's an oracle relative to which it has exponential size circuits. That's the oracle relative to which p equals np. That I just mentioned a moment ago. We don't know if there's an oracle under which this thing has small circuits. So, uh, so this is open. Okay, is is there such an oracle? Now, what's the consequence of that? Well, it's possible that there's a relativizing proof, a proof using totally standard techniques, maybe similar to the one for e to the sigma two p, that this sigma two e needs exponential size circuits. One that just uses standard black box techniques is totally possible in the realm of possibility. All right. Now, um, what does this have to do with mysteries? Well, we'll give a new way of thinking about questions like these. So, not only this question, but sort of any question involving relativization and exponential size uh, circuits can be rephrased in terms of a very simple problem the circuit complexity of a very simple problem. All right. So this is the missing string problem, and it's a really simple problem, okay? Given a list of m strings of length n, where m is less than to the n, uh-oh, to the n, find a string not in the list, okay? It's a total function problem. I mean, as long as I don't include it, all the strings, there is some string on the list. I want you to find one. That's it, all right? So if the list, what does that have to do with hardness and well, the list is truth tables of all the easy functions we're asking you to find a hard function. Okay. So, you know, so it's like, I've, oh, here's all the things that are easy. Find me something that's not there. So that's, that's the problem. Okay. So it can be viewed uh, as an exponential size version of a, another problem, which has seen a lot of attention recently. And in fact, you'll see some attention paid to it Later today, I guess, Heinlein is giving a talk on, on this problem. It's called range avoidance. So given a Boolean circuit from little n bits to capital N bits, where capital N, this thing is now fucking, capital N is greater than N, find a string 
uh, in the output that's not in the range. Okay, all right. So you've got like more possible outputs than you do inputs. So there's got to be something not in the range. There's only two to the n inputs in the range, and there's two to the m possible outputs. All right. So a random string works with probability of least a half, as Henley will probably tell you. But to check that the given y actually works requires some call to set. You have to check as far as you know that there is no input that will actually output this y. Uh, in fact, circuit set. Right? right. So deterministic algorithms for this range avoidance problem naturally can be used to construct explicit functions that don't have small circuits. So imagine that C is something that takes descriptions of small objects like circuits or whatever and prints truth tables. Okay, maps into their truth tables. Um, right, so then finding something not in the range is exactly finding a hard function. Okay, we're gonna look at this even like much, much simpler problem missing string. Because once you throw circuits in there, it, you know, things become difficult. So I wanna keep it easy. So let's just look at missing string, All right? So variants of this problem are apparently popular uh, in coding interviews. I don't know, I've never, had to do one of these, thank God. But there are apparently phrases like missing integer, so like that, but so let's see one way to solve this thing uh, efficiently. Um, so there's like, for example, an O tilde M time algorithm for missing string. Um, and let's just say it's a random access model. We're not gonna care too much about that. And because I guess learning is a topic of this workshop, it's a having algorithm. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call it, a having, having algorithm. So, our missing string will be some x with bits x1 through xn. So we probe the first bit of every string and we set you know, the first bit of our bad string to be the minority bit of those. Okay, then we probe the second bit of all those strings that agree in that minority bit. And we set our next bit to be the minority bit of those. Okay, we probe the third bit of all the strings that agree in those first two bits. Is it the minority bit of those? So we're kind of like, you know, unlearning. <laughs> we're trying to like not, you know, get something not on the list. Okay. Um, so after log m rounds of this, uh, no strings are left. Okay. And then we, if we didn't actually, you know, cover all the bits of uh, x, we just fill in the remaining ones with zeros. Capital M. Okay. Yeah, it should be capital M. Yeah. There isn't even a little M on the slide other than that one. So it's capital M. Yeah. yeah. So this gives you like the lower bound in X to the sharp P to the NP or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I think you can get like even X to the PP, you know, like majority set or both. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think even like the class where you can count sat to like an additive form plus epsilon. Sorry, I'm uh, Okay, so, so then it's you're back up in the polynomial hierarchy. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I mean you could do approximate counting, but that takes more words. So I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this is still a linear time algorithm for or whatever, close to linear. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could imagine doing approximate counting, like you only get approximate minority and then you can get away with, with less. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, there's definitely some pages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you end up getting something like e to the promise am, but you have to be careful about like using that rule about. Okay. okay, for reasons I definitely don't want to talk about uh, at this, this early point. So, 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 so how many probes does this thing use into the string? So remember, it's, it's m times n bits total, right? Uh, so it takes m probes to get the first bit, m over 2, and most of m over 2 to get the second, m over 4. The total number of probes is actually order m, looks like 2m, okay? And uh, there's, in fact, a, a paper called Diagonalization Games that appeared on Archive in early January that, uh, I guess, nails uh, what that, what that uh, it's inside the big O. Okay. Good. Missing string. Very simple problem. So what are we going to do? We're going to show a strong equivalence between questions like, is there an oracle A so that sigma 2 with this A oracle has an A oracle circuit of to the little of in size and the complexity of finding a missing string. Okay, there's going to be like a, a strong equivalence between like complexity class, exponential complexity class has a oracle circuits that are small and uh, missing string uh, does not have uh, uh, circuits of a particular type, like low depth circuits of a particular type. Okay, so efficient circuits for missing string 
actually correspond to efficient circuits of constructions of hard functions. So here, if you design a good algorithm for missing string, you are actually uh, proving a better lower bound. You're improving the complexity of constructing a hard function. Okay, so this is, dire this is directly like algorithms implying lower bounds, okay? And then another guys. Okay. So here's an example theorem. I'll give you a few of these before I state the, the generic result. So for every Oracle A, uh, sigma 2E with A requires to the epsilon n size A Oracle circumplexity almost everywhere. If and only if there are uniform depth three AC zero circuits for missing string of two to the poly capital N size and poly capital N bottom fan N on all lists of length M about two to the end of the epsilon. Okay, by uniform, I mean uh, po like polylog uh, uniform in the input. Okay. All right, so there's an equivalence here. So the problem that we're asking about oracles boils down to whether missing string has such circuits or not. Um, if you could prove, you know, even say a non-uniform depth three lower bound missing string, it would, you know, it would uh, imply there must exist such an oracle. Okay. I mean, there's a sense in which um, oracles are like all the possible inputs that can come into missing string, and if you can find like bad inputs that make missing string require high circumplexity, then you're actually finding oracles in which uh, this thing has small <laughs> circumplexity. And it's, it's, a, it's pretty weird, uh, but it's, yeah. So it's an algorithmic equivalence between uh, sort of AC zero algorithms and improving uh, the hard function, improving the complexity of the hard function. Here. Okay, so I drew some picture here, yeah. So. So we got the depth three circuits. Let's say it's got ORs. It could have ANDs at the top. Then ANDs, and these have two of the poly capital N fan N. And at the bottom, there's a small fan N. And we, we have N times M bits. There's M strings of LinkedIn. We got to output a missing string, right? So this thing's got to output M bits. We got sort of a, you can think of having a separate circuit for each of the possible output bits. Right. Now know that since we set M to be about two to the end of the epsilon, we're asking for a circuit that's quasi polynomial in the input size, right? So that means that this is two to the end of the epsilon. We're asking something that's two to the poly uh, n. So it's like, so it's quasi quasi polynomial in the, in the input link. So this is kind of like uh, um, the the model in which yeah we want to we want to understand whether this thing can compute a missing string or not. Such a simple problem. Uh, I feel like we should be able to figure it out. Unfortunately, we haven't yet. So yeah, that's what happened. So the thing I want to mention here is that depth three is crucial. So often when you think about AC zero lower bounds, like there's always some sort of size depth trail. Okay, almost always some sort of size depth trail, right? Like you can, you, if you buy this much more depth, you can decrease the size by this much. Here, there is nothing of the sort. There's, there's nothing like that, okay? So for example, we can plug in non deterministic exponential time to this equivalence. Okay, we'll get depth two AC zero circuits. But the thing is, there's a lot of work in relativized circumplexity. And so actually we know that this is false, that we know that there are oracles relative to which NE actually has linear circuits. Okay, so this automatically translates to a lower bound. There's no depth two circuits. Okay, so, so yeah, you can use like various uh, relativized oracles showing that this surprisingly large class has small circuits to through various lower bounds and missing string. Yes. So I think our best lower bounds for depth three AC zero circuits for functions in P are like two to the square root of N. Yeah. How does that translate here? Would you have to beat that? No, 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 that would be enough. But the problem is it, it, like, I don't see how it fits in the missing string. So we just need a quasi polynomial lower bound actually. Oh, oh okay. It's quasi polynomial, right? We don't need to the square root of N. Okay, sorry. So the, oh, because the little, the big yeah. N, is small compared to the big end. Yeah, yeah. So the input length is this, right? This is the input length, and we want to the poly end. So that's actually just quasi polynomial <coughs> in the input length. Yeah. So you said that the Wilson result implies the depth to lower bounds. Can you put depth to lower bound for this in this case? Yeah, yeah. So you can actually look at his and his proof and just extract exactly directly at that depth to lower bound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's just sort of like, yeah, you just sort of follow like what he's doing and 
Yeah, yes, yes. Is, it, is the lower bound that you get a uniform one or a? It's, it's even non-uniform. It's a non-uniform. It's even non-uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. Uh, when you say when you're when you're providing the input to mixing, should you say on all lists of like M? Should I think of it as having two to the n inputs, but two to the n of the epsilon or one? You know what I mean? Two to the epsilon or one. No, 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 so epsilon is a fixed constant. It's here. No, I understand. That. I just don't understand how missing string is provided as input to the circuit. So I have like a bit for every possible string. I have n bits for every possible string. Oh, n bits. So the strings are of length uh, n. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The strings are of length n. So it's like capital, the input is of length capital N times. I see. And you have like m yeah. times n bits that are just. Yeah, that's why I put the whatever this approximate. Because like, yeah. yeah. But just want to understand how important this uniform is in that. I don't actually. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's important um, for the equivalence, but like if you prove right a non uniform lower bound, it implies a uniform lower bound. And so, like one direction, it's fine with non uniformity. Okay. But yeah, 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 I don't, I don't even know the non uniform. Yes. So, so, question, uh, so you said that we have these sub half exponential lower bounds. So, yes. do, do those translate to some sort of Circuit construction, so circuit low bounds. Oh, uh, they should. They should. I mean, if they relativize and they do, yeah. So they, they yeah, they, they definitely do. But, I mean, this low bound are uh, open. That's that's also true. So it would only like give you something that works infinitely often. Like it, it would give you AC zero circuits. No, but but you need to use the inputs on one for them. Another. Um, I mean, I think that, I think the point is I think you could write down like an explicit uh, function that would require it, but you don't know which input links it would work on. Well, I guess you, because you because you know that. And sorry. The function will involve two different inputs, and you can only run either this input or. So I mean, there. And I know that for sigma two p, there are explicit functions that need, uh, let's say, into the k side circuits. I, I thought you could probably just lift one of those. Like there, there are ways of dealing with this input link. So like, um, I mean, your function has Psi and Watanabe have a paper. A of, a of so we can maybe we yeah. can talk about it offline. But yeah. like, Psi and Watanabe have a paper where they have like explicit function that you know, so you don't have to worry about two different input links. Mm -hmm. But okay, okay. So depth three is crucial, right? So another weird note is that. Um, if you believe in circuit lower bounds, you believe like any requires exponential size circuits, then that means that there actually are depth two circuits for succinct instances of missing string, where succinct is the usual interpretation of there's a small circuit that will generate the instance for you. Right? So, so, so this is like some weird way in which um, here's a problem. Like we know a lower bound on arbitrary, like random instances, say. But uh, for succinct instances, we believe there actually is a, a good algorithm. There is a better algorithm. So like a, a, some sort of weirdness, you know, we normally think of P equals NP and X in X equals X as being roughly the same, but this is, anyway, yes. That's the same for like de-randomization. Yeah. Yeah, you can think of like the problem of, of finding one yeah. in a dense string. Sure. Um, so we believe yeah, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, yeah. possible for any yeah, succinct. Sure. True. Does the same thing change the size of the uh, the parameters? Like uh, now, it's parsing the string to the least number of circuit size. No, it doesn't. It doesn't change like any of the, like the input link parameters. It's just saying that there's a small circuit that generates instances. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Then you're like the usual notion of like if I say succinct three set or succinct whatever graph problem, it means that there's a small circuit that generates the like a poly size circuit that generates an exponential size. Object. Um, no, no. So it's like you just want a depth two circuit that is only guaranteed to succeed on succinct instances. Yeah, that, that, is, that, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't work on all inputs, or it doesn't have to. Well, it, it won't. But <laughs> because, because, yeah. So it's not the input itself is succinctly given. It's just that impossible. Yeah, yeah. It said, it said it, it can be succinctly. It can be compressed, right? Yeah. Yep. Good. Um, okay. So another example theorem we get. So if we move up to sigma three e, where we 
no um, lower bounds because sigma three e contains this e to the sigma two t. So we get some equivalence with depth four, and that's known to be true, right? So that lower bound relativizes the, the one that gets maximum circuit complexity. And so therefore we know that depth four circuits exist, in fact. Okay, so we know that depth four circuits exist. Um, we know depth two does not exist. We want to know about depth three. Okay, that's that's the state of affairs. It's also possible. I mean, if you think about the argument, they're basically taking a depth four circuit. Yep. And yeah, this yeah, uh, it's an exercise yeah, right. to construct a depth four circuit from the argument. Yeah, <laughs> you're just yeah, you're looking for a lexicographically first thing. If you think about what happens, it turns out to be depth four. Yeah, you can try to make it depth three. <laughs> I tried, but it's depth four. <laughs> you can try to merge quantifiers. Sorry. All right. Um. So here's the statement of the general. Here, okay, I'm doing a game of time. So I'll just tell you, like, at a really high level, like, what is the general equivalence? So we want to have some general statement about exponential time classes. So let G be some arbitrary uh, decision problem. And we say that F is in G of E. So think of G as like the OR function or the AND function or the majority function. If there's a constant C in a Turing machine running in two to the C in time, where n is the length of x and y is the exponential length witness, so that for all x, uh, f of x is one, if and only if this g on all possible choices for y, right? Y is of length two to the cn, so we're trying all possible choices of, wait, I think I threw in an extra two there. Okay, well, yeah, there's a, <laughs> yeah, it should just be like, yeah, that's too many. It should just be two to the cn, okay. Anyway, the, the number of such strings is that much, okay? And we're asking whether that is uh, equal to one. So like, for example, if uh, we compute the OR function, we're just asking if there exists a witness that makes this machine accept, and that'll be the same as n time to the order n, okay? And like, if we have the AND function, that'll be co-n time, we take the majority, that'll be P time and, and so on. So the generic theorem, this is a sort of an informal statement, is that for every oracle, this G uh, dot E with A needs exponential A oracle circumplexity if and only if missing string has circuits of the following type. It's a big, big G of decision trees of polynomial depth, of, or poly in depth, where n, n is uh, the length of the string. But again, like this is like a poly log because our input length is roughly two to the, uh, into the epsilon. This is true for every G? Um, yeah, this is true for all Gs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just generic statement. So, so the point is there's lots of other weird classes like PX where actually there are small circuits and then you get, oh, missing string doesn't have a majority of decision trees of this depth. So there's, there's lots of like weird like oracles that's showing like surprising a oracle circuit complexity collapses. They give you this thing. So, so you can extract a lot of results just from like known oracles, uh, uh, different lower bounds on missing string from that. All right, I just want to state that and, and then um, sort of give you an idea of, of how this uh, theorem works. So let me just sketch like how you prove this, the easier case of this equivalence. So this is the case we care about. Um, so if there are uniform or and or, for example, circuits for missing string up to the poly n size, poly n bottom fan n on all lists of, of length um, about to the end of the epsilon, then we would get that sigma 2e requires uh, to the epsilon n size circuit complexity. In fact, we would get it um, for oracles, uh, or at least there are oracles. So, so this is the algorithms imply lower bounds direction. Okay, this is the, this is sort of the, Thing we would like to prove, but there might end up being a depth three lower bound for missing string anyway. So let me just sketch like how this goes. It's not very hard, I mean, but just to sort of lay it out uh, so you can see it. So our sigma 2e function will evaluate the depth three circuit for missing string. So this is a uniform thing. So it's, it's polylog. So I can, uh, given a particular gate, like the output gate, I can easily figure out what are the different input labels of input uh, gates going into that, right? So we'll evaluate this missing string with this input just fixed to be 
the list of all truth tables of functions with circuits of size to the epsilon n. So we're just going to imagine that that's the input. Now I just want to evaluate this uniform circuit, OK? And figure out like what is, what is the ith bit of its output for a given i. So that, that's, that's the, the thing I want to do. All right, so, so our n is to the n. Right, or we have these links of truth tables to the n. We have m uh, possible circuits, and most to the order uh, to the epsilon n times n of these. So on an input x, our sigma to e function just tries to output the x output of the missing string circuit. Right, so it's a two to the n bit output. So we can index it by some x of n bits. We just existentially guess an input wire to the output OR gate, which is true. And that's coming from some AND gate G. We universally trial input wires to the AND gate coming from, that's coming from some OR gate H. But that OR gate H has low bottom fan in. Remember, it has like poly in bottom fan in. So we can just evaluate all these literals uh, having wires, all the literals that have wires going into that, and except if and only if at least one of those literals is true. Right? So we get a, a something that's sigma 2e. Right? This is just sort of, because it has this like low bottom fan in, we can, we can spend poly capital N uh, at the end, right? Because capital N is to the N, so that's to the order N time, right? Uh, these guesses are of link to the order N, both of these guesses, um, because of our, our fan in, is to the poly N size. We're just going to guess one of them, so it's poly N bits to write one of them down, coming in. Okay. So assuming we can compute local information on the gates of the circuit, this whole process can be done into the order in time on a sigma two machine. So that's sort of the algorithms imply lower balance direction. All right. Now for the other direction, um, right? We 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 want to make it so that like, if something requires a oracle circuit complexity, somehow this implies a lower bound. And the thing is, like, if you just start thinking about this problem. A oracle circuits can become complicated. Well, it turns out that they don't have to be complicated. So, so um, oh, this, oh, yeah. So there's a normal form. So, so the main answer to the question why is there like a tight connection here is that there's a certain precise sense in which relativized circuit complexity is trivial. Like it's a trivial notion. The structure of the circuit actually makes no difference in a in a certain rigorous sense. Okay. Uh, Russell is nodding, so I guess you already know this, but I think. You can put the structure in the, in the oracle. You can put the structure in the oracle, yeah. That's essentially what this slide says. Okay. So, so like an A oracle circuit can look really complicated like this, right? So we say A oracle circuit is trivial if it has the following form, okay? It's just A with like a bunch of bits hard-coded in, okay? And we count the size as the number of these wires. So we count, we still are, we're not cheating on size. We say, okay, the number of extra bits you got to plug in, uh, yeah, that, that counts as your size. All right. So we measure size by number of inputs. Okay. And so the theorem is yeah, suppose there exists some Oracle A, so that C time to the A to the order N has A oracle circuits of size S of N. And C time could be D time, N time, BP time, sigma two time, sigma three, whatever. It could be many, many different uh, classes here. Suppose there's an Oracle A of the left-hand side form, okay? Then there is an Oracle B of the right-hand side form, okay? So there's an Oracle B so that the same class really that Oracle B has trivial B Oracle circuits, okay? So you don't, so you don't actually have to think about it with respect to this. So this is why like finding even a single Oracle um, will give you lower bounds on missing string in a nice way. Now, there's a way, there's a sense in which like, all you gotta do is just print out, you know, what, a does with the, with like various uh, strings hard coded here. Um, okay. Um, right. So you know, so with all of generality, we can just work with trivial circuits when we're considering statements about whether there exists an oracle or not. Because, so it actually is really simplifies like the whole idea. And if you look at these relativized circuit complexity papers, they're the way they design the the sort the oracle circuits always look like this anyway. So 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 uh, okay. That's, I guess that's right. So the idea is really simple. Given an Oracle A, you set Oracle B to be A Oracle circuit evaluation. Okay. So the A Oracle circuit evaluation is given the description of an A Oracle circuit, given an input, evaluate it. 
evaluate the circuit on the input, right? Okay, so then, um, so then all you do, so you have your B here, you take the description of this, you plug it in here, boom, that's it. Now, now, so like I said, I give you the input, I give you the circuit, tell me the value of the input on the circuit. That's all, that's, that's all, this is like, okay? So as long as C time to the A to the order N equals C time to B to the order N, we're okay, right? So, right, so for circuit evaluation and for these particular classes, that's true. I mean, it's true in a more general sense. You can see the paper if you want, but that's, that's it. Yes? Might be a dumb question, but why can't you have the Oracle B cheat your way around the circuit size by just for, like, fixing one particular A Oracle circuit and saying that the Oracle B just evaluates the circuit only for that? So it's not taking what's so already wired to describe the circuit for that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I'm not sure I understand the question, and I'm running a little short on time. So, so let me let me just. So, great. Um, yeah, I'm running really short on time. Yeah, 45 minutes is, is tough. Actually, how much time do I have? Maybe five minutes. Maybe five minutes. Okay. All right, I'll I'll go with that one. Okay. So, so yeah, 45 minutes is is not it's not easy. So, so I want to talk briefly about local algorithms for finding a missing string, um, and this is useful for for improving uh, lower bounds in, in a sense that we'll see. So it starts with just Cantor's diagonal argument, which says, look, if the number of strings at most the number of bits in the string, then we can find a missing string by just taking the diagonal. Okay, so, right, if, if M is at most N, then we can just take the diagonal, flip the bits, right? And what we can say from this is like, okay, for all of the possible uh, output bits of the missing string, we can actually compute that bit by just making one probe into the input, right? So to compute the ith bit of the missing string here, we just make one bit probe. And this is, this is actually very convenient. And in fact, this is sort of why a lot of time hierarchy theorems are so, so tight, because you're actually, just, you're actually just sort of on any particular input, right? You think of this as like a truth table, you're on any particular input, you're just uh, querying uh, one of the easy functions. Just calling one of the easy functions and flipping the answer. Okay. All right. So, so I will say that means that there's a one probe algorithm for missing string. Okay. So to compute the ith bit of the missing string, you just need to make one probe in the input. That's it. All right. All right. So then, so okay, I, I, I had a parameter one. Now the natural question is what happens when I increase this parameter? Okay. So under what conditions can we use only k probes? So like what, how, how big can the list M be so that we can get away with K probes, right? Because we want the list M to be as big as possible because we want to like get a missing string out of a lot of easy functions, right? So imagine the, the list being like functions that have small circuits. As the list gets bigger and bigger, we are finding a harder and harder function, right? So we want to make M as large as possible here. Okay, so that's just summarizing what I had before. What can we do with K probes? It's easy to see if M is K times N, there's no K minus one probe algorithm, okay? Um, the idea is that like the total number of probes you make is, uh, is so small, you, there's some string you didn't even probe, okay? So there's some string, you, like if you make only K minus one probes, there's some string you didn't probe at all. So like any algorithm, you know, whatever you report, you can have adversarial input that just plugs in <laughs> that uh, what you reported as uh, you know, one of the strings you didn't probe. So, okay. Right, that's uh, easy. So there's a k order k log k probe algorithm for missing string. Um, maybe I will skip it. If you really want to know, uh, you can ask me in the questions. Um, just because I, I don't want to take too much time. Okay, so, so there is like an order k log k probe algorithm when the number of strings is the most k times the number of bits. And a corollary is that you get new time hierarchy theorems against uh, non-uniform programs, okay? So here's some old time hierarchy theorems against advice. So it was known that if you had like H of N uh, growing say faster than G of N, then you could show that H of N is not, time is not in time G of N with N bits of advice. And the usual time hierarchy theorem kind of just works <laughs> there. You can, you can have M, you can diagonalize against uh, programs that have n bits of advice 
So for each input of length n, there is a program of size n. You can still diagonalize that with a uniform function. Another sort of theorem is um, if you have arbitrary g and h, you can list all the programs of length g of n and diagonalize against them like this, and you can get some uniform function inside this. And this is how you, for example, can construct a function in exponential time that doesn't have n squared size circuits, for example. All right. So these are like the old hierarchies. So here are some examples of new hierarchies that improve uh, these bounds like by two of the n factors. Um, one interesting thing, so here, so we're saying time two to the cn is not in time order n with cn plus n bits of advice. The interesting thing about that is that these are relativized, and there's actually an oracle uh, such that if you make the time bound of the hard function a little bit smaller, is that this no longer holds. And in fact, uh, you, can, you can get oracle circuits that are uh, of this like really small size. Okay, so there's a sense in which this is optimal. All right. Um, uh, yes. Do you get the oracle band proven lower bounds for missing string? Um, do I get it by proving lower? No, I don't. But uh, you could do it that way, though. <laughs> you can always. I mean, they're equivalent essentially, right? It's basically by a sort of a probe lower bounds. Yeah, against missing string. Yeah, you could. You could take. I mean, basically, basically all those relativized oracle things. You could always like. And we haven't found a single example where it's not easy to just go back and say, oh, here's a lower bound for this weird circuit class uh, solving this string. Yeah. Which means uh, you can prove that lower bound for using this. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, for certain parameters, right? Like it's like uh, for missing string instances coming from this, 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 and this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here are the main open problems. That are left, does missing string have small uniform depth three circuits or not? Can't have depth two. We know it has depth four. Depth three is a sweet spot. I mean, depth three, there's other ways in which you can get lower bounds, like Pavel has uh, work and various uh, works, like using the satisfiability coding lemma in these top down lower bounds. Where you, there's different ways of getting depth three lower bounds. So maybe there, for depth three, there are some special techniques you can use to get lower bounds. Um, yeah, I really don't know what the answer is. So lower bounds, upper bounds, fine. Fine. Each other problems in the same steps. Work with three to the. I don't, I actually don't know. Is there another problem that has this kind of form that anyone knows about? I don't know of another problem. Actually, there's all. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, like. Examples are welcome. I don't know of a problem that has this weird status, like that three. Okay. So the next question is how many probes are necessary and sufficient to find a missing string when the number of strings at most k times n? Right. So we get some trade off. The answer is somewhere between k and order k log k. Uh, we don't know. Um, and then since we're also, this workshop also has average case complexity in it, I should talk about average case complexity in the last minus something minutes I have. So. So finding an average case hard function corresponds to finding uh, some kind of remote point. So a string far in Hemi distance from all the ones on the list, right? So can we rule out depth three circuits for this harder problem? So I think it's an interesting question. All right, that's all, thank you. So a question, if you can hear me, um, yes. Okay, for this last bullet, do you have an equivalence uh, like before that if you can solve a remote point, then you have average case hard functions? Is this a formal equivalence? Oh, um, like an average case thing. Yeah. I mean, as far as I can tell, um, there should be equivalence. I didn't write it, the proof down though, okay. <laughs> so. But okay. I don't. I don't really see a reason why. Um, so right, the equivalence would be something like um, whether we can whether we can show that uh, sigma 2e has like even like, it's hard to approximate with circuits, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, I, sure. I, I don't see a reason why the, what we did wouldn't work, but. And, uh, oh, I don't know of relativizing. Worst case That's a good question. He was asking whether it was relativizing worst case to average case reductions or. 
Uh, and sorry. Yes. Another question, if you can. Um, can you give me like a simple setting of parameters for this uh, problem? The uh, the least problem that I can think about, like so, like like least of size uh, n with n bits. Uh, yeah, I like mean you can you can change around the parameters. You can change the variables if you want to, but I mean it's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can, yeah, right. Like sometimes it's easier if you change the variables, but uh, for me, yeah, it's it's this. Uh, so this many strings of n bits, and secretly, right, we think of n as like capital N is the length of a truth table. Can you see this, I, uh, Manuel? Yes, yes, yes. I can see it very well. Okay, okay Thank good. You. Yeah. So, but yeah, you can you can make it as you you can change it around and make it a function of capital M if you like. Uh, I can pick an epsilon I want. So. If it helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is going to translate to to the epsilon n uh, size lower bounds. Yeah, I'm just thinking what's like a simple circuit problem uh, for some specific settings of parameters. Uh, so you can set epsilon to be a half? Yeah. Square okay, root. Okay. I, I don't know what else you. Okay. Uh, I guess, uh, let me put it this way. The simplest uh, setting uh, for which we we don't have an answer. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, for all we know, um, sigma two e has an oracle with linear size circuits. So you could you could make this like polylog. Uh, you could make this okay. yeah polylog in if you want. Capital yeah. I mean, I, Okay. Okay. So let's take questions. Thank you. I have a 10 minute break. I think it's a 10 minute break.